Hi guys, what's up? Toba Logo here. Today we are back with the 2010 FIFA World Cup South Africa Legendary Runs and of course through January we're doing mostly African teams. Today I decided to finally do Cape Verde Islands, a much requested nation in the past but I never really got round to it. But I figured now since they already played their first match yesterday or a couple of days ago whenever this comes out and um, they won. So I figured, yeah, let's do Cape Verde Islands on the 2010 game. They are a one and a half star team, but I reckon that this team has a lot of potential because I know on this game that they do have quite a fair bit of pace. So you never know, the run could be a really good one or it could be a really bad one. Depending on who we get, we're going to randomize the teams that are in the World Cup. So here we go, boom, and then we're just going to go straight into the groups and find out our groups. So let's see what groups we get, let's just advance, and we are in a group with England, Ukraine, Gabon, and that sounds like a very, very tough group. England, obviously, one of the better teams in the group. Ukraine, very, very good, I'd say slightly better than average, and Gabon, obviously another African nation that we have to play possibly beatable. They are a two and a half star, maybe three star team. So let's have a look and see who we have for Cape Verde Islands. Let's see if we have any recognisable names. So I don't recognise people from the get-go. There are a few 60 rated players in there, a 65 rated centre back. We have this guy called Daddy, who's rated 72 and he's a star player, so he might be pretty good. Um, we've got a guy called Fock in goal. I mean, this team has some interesting names. We've got Toy up front as well. I mean, are these guys actually real players or did they make these guys up? Our first match is against Gabon. So hopefully we can get a nice win or draw to start our campaign off. I don't know too much about Cape Verde Islands football. I don't really know any uh, players that play for Cape Verde. I've only heard of one player actually thinking about it and his name is like is it Janny or Djani or something like that I can't remember the name but all I know is that he was quite a fast player on FIFA or something like that he wasn't very much used sort of thing but I do remember a player called Djani or some something like that hopefully we can beat Gabon I mean it'd probably be a fair game um, I don't really know too much about Cape Verde Island's recent results apart from they won in the Africa Cup of Nations in their first group stage I think it was against Guinea-Bissau or something like that, I think. Um, and um, also they drew against Nigeria in World Cup qualifying. They could have gone through into 2022 qualifying, but um, it, the result wasn't enough against Nigeria. I think they lost 1-0 in the end. Come on, let's get an attack going. Let's get this run started with a goal. That would be very, very good. Here comes Daddy. He's running. Here comes Daddy. He shoots. Oh, just wide of the post. It feels weird saying, like, here comes Daddy and stuff like that. It feels so weird. We have to be careful with Gabon because they do have pace, um, of course, with Aubameyang. And um, I think Aubameyang's brother plays for Gabon. Because I know on 2014 there's two Aubameyangs on the squad. So I'm not sure whether or not they're playing both of them right now. They're both as fast as each other. I know Gabon can be a very quick side. Go on. Oh, good save, but we got the rebound. And oh, what? I thought he scored that. That 100% needed to go in. I can't believe that. How did you not score that? That was open. Crossed in by Gabon, but no, nothing doing. And it's probably going to be half time with the scores locked at 0 0. A bit of a tough game for both of these sides. We had a better chance to go 1 0 up than Gabon has. I'm still worried about the threat that they impose on goal. Remember, obviously, Abamyang is. A class striker back back in 2010 to 2014 or whatever, Aubameyang was class. Oh, I hate that. Like, don't do that. No. Oh, good save. How on earth do we not clear it from that situation? That is poor defending from Kate Verde. Both teams are super defensive. I'm trying not to get annoyed. But, yeah, no. It's not been a great match. It's been quite boring. The problem is, sometimes with these uh, matches is that you'll get swarmed by defenders constantly and it, it just doesn't help you out too much when your players don't really want to move around very well. That's a decent ball. That's good. Good goal. Yes, there we go. That's what we wanted. Daddy with the cross and Cecilio with the header. 
and we take a 1-0 lead in the 71st minute. That was completely unexpected. I switched the team into attacking. That ball was a little bit off and I crossed it in expecting it to go miles over the bar and instead Cecilio was there to header it in. Fantastic play by Cape Verde Islands. 1-0 up. That's a great ball. Here comes Daddy. Oh, it's offside. I thought it was onside. I clearly thought it was onside because it was such a good ball, but I think he was just slightly, yeah, just slightly outside. Not the easiest of matches by a long shot, but we still got the win against Gabon, which I did predict at the start, and um, we had to grind that one. It was kind of boring up until the 71st minute. We barely had any shots because they were so defensive and you know it, it was always going to be like that anyway now the true test comes against ukraine and england i mean like two training injuries to some of my better players as we come out of that match that's so annoying the game just randomly does it because you don't when you press the training thing by the way it just puts you in this thing where you can just practice your skills and stuff like that it's mainly for the player it isn't for the squad if i'm lucky in this match i could come away with a draw and that'll have four points, and that might be enough to get out of this World Cup, maybe. But, on the other hand, Ukraine are a very tough team to play against on this game. They have Shevchenko, they have Andrei Voronin. If we drop this game, then the group will pretty much be even, apart from the fact that um, I don't think Gabon are going to win against England. I don't think so, anyway. I'd be very surprised if they did. We have a few injuries to our squad, but... Sometimes the people on the bench can come up clutch and get those crucial goals you need. Crossed into the box. That's a good header opportunity, but unfortunately the goalkeeper saved it. It was a bit, bit of a weak header. Here comes Daddy on the ball. He just couldn't get round that player. At least we're pressing Ukraine a little bit and we're not getting completely dominated. I'm, I am worried at the fact that they do have better stamina than us and late game that will be a bit of a problem corner to Cape Verde Islands daddy is going to cross us in and that is not a bad ball at all oh I just shaved the post why couldn't that go in that would have been a dream start for Cape Verde Islands look how close this was look just shaving the post why is it whenever I press the A button to pass it away it takes like a good year for the game to go oh yeah you wanted to pass didn't you so like, come on, you're putting me in these kind of situations where I'm literally floundering to try and get the ball out of my box. That's a good ball, a really good ball. Cecilio is out on the wing. He's going to cross that. That's not bad. Off the post. Oh, twice Cape Verde Islands could have taken the lead. Because Daddy, that's not a bad shot, but it was wide. Putting a lot of pressure on Ukraine. Making sure that they don't have any opportunities. We are almost at half time. We go into half time with a nil nil on the score sheet. And um, Cape Verde Islands have really held their own in this match. Not too bad at all. Two shots that almost could have gone in. They definitely have a lot better attacking options than what I do. But credit to my defence at the moment. They have played really well to stop Ukraine from going through. Cecilio, he goes for the shot. Oh, it's a good save. Get the header. It's a goal. Nice. That deflection was wicked. It was wicked. And Daddy scores to make it 1-0. We only have half an hour to play in this one. And Cape Verde Islands have taken a shock lead. If we can beat Ukraine, we are 100% through. The way the goalkeeper saved this was so weird. He pushed it on the floor and made it bounce in the air. And made Daddy header it. And he couldn't get the, the save on the second shot. And wow, I, I'm stunned. I'm stunned at the fact that Cape Verde Islands are ahead in this game. That was a hell of a tackle. Through ball. Oh, no way. That was a great defensive play. We got the ball back again there. And here we go. Here comes Cecilio. He's not offside. No, that was so unlucky. Keep it on the floor. Crossed in. Header. Oh, wow. That was a great header. I Over the top of the defenders and Ronnie scores to make it 2-0. This is a dream run at the moment. I cannot believe that Cape Verde Islands are on the fringe of getting out of this group stage. Look at him. He outjumped two defenders in that play. As we just see the ball come in here again. Two defenders. Goalkeeper. Terrible save. And Cape Verde Islands are embarrassing Ukraine. Ukraine need to step it up. I hope they don't. But... On their part, they really do. No, oh my goodness, he almost got a back heel. 
thank God Ernesto actually saved that because that would have been probably one of the goals of the tournament. Good tackle. We haven't given Ukraine anything in this match. We really haven't. We've been so good. And that's it. We just beaten Ukraine 2-0. And we've knocked them out because England beat them and now we've beaten them. So we just caused the first casualty of this World Cup. Ukraine going out after their second game. But Cape Verde Islands are through to the next round because they've got six points. How about that? And I reckon that England have probably beaten Gabon. So the match against England is a bit of a nothing match. But still, it's important because of form. So looking at our group then, England has scored four against Gabon. They've got an eight goal difference, really. They Well, plus six goal difference, but they scored eight goals and only conceded two. Um, we've got a 3-0 and goal difference. Ukraine and Gabon are going home. I'm really surprised at the fact that Cape Verde Islands pulled that result out of the bag, especially after Gabon, because I knew I was going to beat Gabon, but... Ukraine are a way better team. So a bit of a nothing match, but one we still need to play and hopefully do well in. Even if we do lose, I want to perform really well so that we can keep some of the players on form. Let's see what we can do against England, though. I mean, look, the match doesn't matter, but I mean, it doesn't mean that we can go out and try and win it. Will England be a bit too much for Cape Verde Islands? I hope not. But here comes Rooney. Oh, wow. He just smashed it into the top corner. I can't do anything about those types of shots. England take the lead in the first 12 minutes, as expected, to be fair. I mean, when Rooney's got the ball and there's an open space and a clear view on goal, he's going to smash it in, especially Rooney from 2010. I mean, Rooney was a fantastic striker. We have the chance to potentially... Oh, no. Oh, here comes Daddy. He skips past the England defence. Can he get a shot on goal? He has. And another shot off the bar. Oh, so unlucky. Gabon have equalised against Ukraine. Ukraine are having a horrible time at this World Cup. Oh, completely exposed. But unfortunately, Hefke fires it miles over the bar. It's half-time and we're 1-0 down against England. Only 1-0 down despite the pressure that they've been putting on. So, I mean, I can't really see Cape Verde Islands being too mad about that if that happened in real life. Heskey, he's pushing his way through and he just scores. I can't tackle Heskey. We just can't tackle him. He's too, like, strong on the ball. I don't think I'm going to get any goals out of this game. I think England are just a little bit too solid. That was a fantastic save by the keeper. That could have been 3-0. Uh, tackled. And I think that's gone out for a goal kick. Yeah, even though they slid me out, like, when I was taking the shot. That's not a free kick or anything like that. Despite England being dominant, I feel that we avoided a colossal, like, failure against them. Like, 2-0 isn't that bad. Like, even though they were very, very good on the ball and the very dominant play and stuff like that, I couldn't really do anything in that match. So we got through. Uh, with six points, that's who, who we got now. We got Portugal. Of course we get a team like Portugal, but that's kind of like good in a way because Portugal, well, Cape Verde Islands was a colony of Portugal ages ago. So this could be like a mini derby, I'd say. I want to say. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, let's have a look at the round of 16 results. So we got Denmark being Iran 3-1. Egypt being Italy 2-0. Uh, Germany versus the USA. Portugal versus Cape Verde Islands. Cameroon beating Croatia 1-0. Uh, 2-1, sorry. And France being Ireland 1-0. And then Holland versus Ivory Coast and England versus Switzerland. Even though I think that we probably will go out in this one, there's still every chance for an upset. Cape Verde Islands have played well up until the England match and I did expect to lose. In this one, uh, I'm going to keep an open mind about it and see how we get on. Even though the back, in the back of my mind, I know that we'll probably should be losing this match. But um, sometimes... In rounds like this, you can pull a performance out the bag. So here we go then. Portugal versus Cape Verde Islands. Let's see if we can actually get the ball rolling in this match or will we get knocked out by Portugal straight away. As long as we play well in this match, that's all I want. Because the run is still successful in terms of like the star rating on the team and everything. Headed back in the box. Uh, uh, go on. Go on. Yes, how did that count? I don't understand how that counted. And it is Daddy who scores. He's got the first goal for 
Cape Verde Islands here. Look at that. We just bumped into number two and it came to my player there who was miles offside. But I don't know how that, that worked. Maybe because it came off the Portuguese player. It No, it was actual... How was that not offside? Maybe... I don't know. Maybe it wasn't offside, but it did look offside. Crossed in. Go on. Yes, it's a goal. He scored again. He scored again. Daddy has scored. And it's 2-0. How did that go in? I I crossed it in. The goalkeeper was not aware of the cross at all. And it looked like we just forced it into the back of the net. That is incredible work. Portugal are just... I don't know what's happened to Portugal. They are just not playing well. They're not playing well defensively. Um, they haven't had an attack yet. And we are 2-0 up within the first... 18 minutes over the top. Go on, over the top to Daddy. Can Daddy get his hat trick in the first half? That would be amazing. Pepe shrugs him off. I'm getting a little bit excited now. 2 0 up against Portugal within the first half an hour. Finesse shot. Oh, just wide of the post. We are having a lot of chances. Okay, now Portugal have exposed me a little bit. They cross it in, and goalkeeper's got it. No, he hasn't. What was that all about? I mean, that save was dreadful. Maybe he couldn't pick, pick it up because it came off of my player. I don't know. It, I think it came off my player and he wasn't allowed to pick it up because it would have been like, I don't know, a back pass or something technically. I don't know. I don't know if the game even has that rule. Comes Daddy. Daddy shoots. Oh, unlucky. Go for the shot. Oh, just wide again. We could have been like 3 or 4 nil up. We are dominating Portugal at the moment. As we go into half time, we have a massive shock on the cards. Cape Verde Islands are leading Portugal 2-0 and it's not through luck either. They've been incredibly good in front of goal. Portugal on the press. Will they get a goal back? They might do. Oh, that was a good chance to get a goal back. They missed a sitter. Cecilio goes for it. Again, just wide of the post. These finesse shots aren't really working for Cape Verde Islands. They are more better at actually just headering the ball in the back of the net and um, little tap-ins. Here comes Daddy. Look at him. He just skips past Pepe like it was nothing. He's got to score, right? No, he overran it. Another corner to Portugal in the dying minutes of the game. What are they going to do? They cross it in. Headed away, almost. I mean, it would be great if my players can defend. Go for the shot. Go on. Oh. I always wish that I could score from like my own half when the goalkeeper's out of the box. I really do, but we just beaten Portugal 2-0. How about that? After losing against England 2-0, Cape Verde Islands have come through with a result like this. And the Ukraine match as well was fantastic. They march on to the quarterfinals where they'll either face Germany or the USA. Who have we got then? I bet it's Germany. It is Germany. Germany versus the Cape Verde Islands. What a challenge this will be for Cape Verde. And I'm extremely happy that we're in the quarterfinal. Really, really happy. So let's have a look at the quarterfinals then. So we've got Denmark versus Egypt, Germany versus Cape Verde Islands, Cameroon versus France, and Holland versus England. Quarterfinal match against Germany. This might be where the run comes to an end. I'm 95% sure of it. But if Cape Verde Islands just have the form that he had against Portugal, then we could potentially knock out Germany. That would be amazing. Imagine if we got to the top four of this World Cup with Cape Verde Islands. That would be absolutely insane. Of course, Germany are one of the better teams in this game. They are one of the best teams to play against. They're very hard to break down. But I'm sure that Cape Verde Islands spirit can carry them in this game. Daddy and Cecilio have been absolutely fantastic up front, linking up plays, just being, well, they're carrying the team at the moment. Germany pressing, there's no defending, and good save by the goalkeeper. We accidentally just passed it straight to him, though. Good save again. That was a rocket. Goalkeeper kept us in that one. Over the top, and Cecilio's going through. The header, uh, that kind of touch wasn't needed. I was kind of hoping you'd do it with your foot. I think this match is going to come down to luck more than anything. Crossed in. Oh, we're having a lot of crosses. Oh, hang on. Oh, Daddy shoot. Oh, my God. Come on. Over the top. Look at that. That's on side as well. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. A little bit in the corners, maybe. That shot needed to be in one of the corners of the net. I don't think I had time to compose myself. Is there anybody in the box that could potentially turn that in? There isn't. 
But we're going to go to half time, hopefully, with a nil nil on the score. And um, that's really good from Kate Verder. Like, they've held on so well in this first half. They are. I knew there was potential with this team. I knew it. I knew there was. Germany are a little bit embarrassed right now that they can't get past them. I don't think the players are, but the manager is embarrassed. I'm sure the fans in the stands will be kicking themselves, thinking, how have we not scored against Cape Verde? Oh, wow. How did I get away with that? That looked like a foul. Here comes Daddy. Oh, unlucky. Is his name actually Daddy, or is it like Dad... Dad why or something. I, I hope I'm not saying it wrong because otherwise I'm gonna get clowned on in the comments. Comes Daddy. He shoots and he hits the post. Unlucky. That was our main chance of the game. Like you know when you get like that one special chance. I feel that that was it. Crossed in. Great cross. Header. Oh the chain of headers was really nice but no it just wasn't big enough. The header. The loop on the header. Through ball, Cecilia is going through in the 72nd minute. Can he score? No! Oh, that's too high. And probably, like I was saying earlier, that was the chance to go 1 0 up. I feel like the game's given me the opportunity, but I'm just not taking the opportunities. And Germany better not score a last minute goal. I'm dead serious about that. Don't you dare! Oh, they almost did! It looks like it's going to go the extra time then against Germany. We've pushed them all the way. We've had our chances. They've had theirs as well. But no winner just yet. That was a great tackle. I can't believe the ball spanned that way. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Helmets is going through. No, no. we got to stop him. Oh, there's nobody there to stop him. And they scored yet. Yeah. I mean, he turned around when I was making the run. And it fooled everybody. And just before half time and extra time, Helmets has scored. An unlikely source of goals, really, because you'd expect Podolski or Closer to score the winning goals for Germany. But no, it was Helmes. I think Germany were, or are, a different breed of team to what we played against Portugal. Portugal, there is obvious weaknesses in their team that you can exploit, whereas Germany are the complete package. No, oh my god, the header just went straight to a German player who... Puts it wide. No, it's not enough. Cape Verde Islands have been knocked out by Germany. We pushed them all the way to the 105th minute, but unfortunately, it was not enough. It was just the fact that Cape Verde Islands didn't have the firepower to get past Germany's defence. I mean, we did have a couple of chances, but it wasn't as clear cut as the Portugal game where I was exploiting a lot of weaknesses and stuff, whereas Germany's defence don't have those weaknesses. They have very good players on their side. And, of course, any German team, whether you're playing them on 2010, 2014, 2006, it's going to be extremely tough to get past. So who won the World Cup is England against Germany in the final, and Egypt nabbed the third-place playoff off of France with a 1-0 victory. So uh, that was a great one by Egypt. And um, England get their dream final beating Germany 2-0. And I really, really hope that you enjoyed this Cape Verde Islands run uh, on legendary difficulty on the 2010 FIFA World Cup game. It was a very good run. I didn't expect to get out of the group stage, but I ended up doing it. And then I ended up beating Portugal 2-0, and potentially it could have been more. And then the quarterfinal against Germany, we did have our chances, but of course Germany are too strong. So if you did enjoy this video, then give it a like and subscribe. Keep it local as always, and I'll see you again for the next video.